Okay, so I'm going to read what I'm replying to this client who wrote me about her situation and she's prior Navy and she's uh, basically seems like she's been bullying around, being bullied at work. Um, just a recap, I'm keeping her name out of it. Um, she's a single mom. Um, every time she would speak to the salon manager about anything, the salon manager would always not agree and then find a way to make her life harder. She's 36 years old. She was a Navy at the age, she was in the Navy at the age of 17. She's worked at least 20 different jobs, she said. I can imagine I've worked at least 20, but I've always had two or three jobs at one time. Um, she says, I have a good understanding of how a workplace should operate, and this was by far the weirdest experience I've ever had for a corporation of this magnitude. Agreed. Uh, she's not that same sit back. Okay, hold on. I'm not some that can sit back and watch wrong things being done and not say anything, nor can I afford to. This uh, salon manager has chased her out of the grooming salon and the store manager itself, him, him or herself, uh, still has allowed her to work in the facility. So it's that to me, I told her, that doesn't make sense to me. Something's not right. If you had done something wrong, they would have let you go completely. It is a, it is a big box place. She loves grooming. She doesn't want to do anything else. She wants to know how, her main question was, how do I approach other places? She's gone through the grooming school with that big box place. And y'all don't assume anything. I'm just not telling you all of it because it's, uh, it's just what you need to know that is uh, important. So this was my reply to her. You were in the military, boom, right there, I would magnify this. But I would pick and choose your battles. If you call HR or whomever, which I did, in my case, I let HR know, you will never be looked at the same at that store. So now you pick and choose. Is this worth it? You can't go off serving your country, then come back being treated with so much disrespect. Heck no. Keep things good. Find another job somewhere where you will be appreciated. Give a good two-week notice, I told her. Don't ruffle any feathers, you guys. You want to give a two-week notice? Have it get, start working your backup plan? But be ready when you hand in... I, I told this gentleman here in Texas. When you hand in your two-week notice, be ready to be let go. Because most places will go ahead and let you go. So if that's the case... Don't say anything about a two-week notice until you have lined up another job, then give your two-week notice and leave on good terms. That's great for your resume. At the end of the day though, hand in a two-week notice letter and get out of there if you feel unsafe. But the thing is, and this is my opinion, Dee Dee Croy's opinion, in the grooming world, you are not going, you are not going to find a lot of respect, unfortunately. You're going to find a lot of, I know everything, I hate everything you do. Rude people, backstabbers, gang up people, bullies. Bunch of girls ganging up, and not always girls either. Could be a bunch of guys, I don't know, I haven't worked for, I haven't worked in those positions. I've worked in where there's a lot of women groomers. And two or three of them are always making me feel uncomfortable talking behind my back. Why, because I'm quiet and I focus and I work hard? I work nonstop, I don't get on my phone and I, I don't take cigarette breaks, I just work nonstop and I can do 25 dogs 25 dogs a day grooming it might take me from you know 10 to 11 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. So it might take me all day but I can do that many dogs if necessary I'm not gonna do that to anybody that works for me but I'm just saying I've been put through that and I can tell you I've been through what some of you guys have been through and I told her I am disgusted by some of the attitudes that swarm this industry probably why I do my own thing it is mostly because of YouTube that I've been able to find groomers that are kind, compassionate to people, not just an animal, if that, uh, but people like me, willing to share love and experience to help each other grow. So like here in Texas, which I've heard from other people, other groomers have called me. Y'all don't know, people call me and we talk and sometimes it's a business uh, conversation that they've called and booked or sometimes it's a personal DD, I don't know what to do. And I've talked to more than 50 people not all owners are groomers, so you're going to run into that situation, and not all groomers are nice. Um, I told her, you should be able to go somewhere else. I've hired someone all day long that was treated like crap at a big box store. I don't hold it against them, but the work ethic has to match the quality of work I need. If it doesn't go, if it doesn't, go in starting as a bather and saying, you need to do more dogs to feel secure, but you're willing to do anything to get to be a groomer. She's been through the grooming school. This, we're talking about Navy here, okay? Key is, some folks don't want to let you start grooming in their salon. So, I've heard this, so I'm telling you. 
So they will give you a growing plan and never stick to it. So if you want a growing plan, you need to put it on paper by X date that you will be grooming your own dogs and making X dollars and have it on paper. So when that day gets there, and you're, this is up to you too, you need to devote the time to make sure you can groom a dog start to finish by yourself. You need to do homework, you need to watch videos, you need to do everything you can to make sure you are ready to go on that day as well. Both parties should be accountable. You need to be able to groom those dogs that day and safely. If not, you can say, I'm not ready to go on my own, can we extend the contract? You know, you, you sit down like a professional and you, cut, you, you know your worth and how hard you're gonna work. Otherwise, you know, then be a bather for life. Um, but I did say, otherwise it can go on forever. I have a gentleman that called me and said, hey Didi, it's been over six months, I've been a bather for this and that. Uh, she told me she was gonna allow me to groom. I haven't been able to do anything but bathe. I do this, check dogs in, check dogs out, take them in, take them out. Um, pick up the phone call, do this. Uh, she, he does everything, bathe the dog, clean the ears, do the anal glands, all this stuff. Won't let him do a haircut. And I told him to make a contract, bring it up. Let her, let her know, he said that the lady w had so many people, that so, so many people come and go, come and go, come and go, so many people leaving. There's a reason why there's a high turnaround. Management should step in and say, why are we having such a high turnaround? People need to be happy. People that are happy stay put. So I told him, do a plan, question, sit down with your manager, be professional. Sit down with your manager and not in public and all this stuff, schedule a meeting and say, this is what I was expecting, this is where I'm at, what's going on, what can I look for, and be ready that day to be let go. Because for some reason, they will let you go. People will just be like, you know what? I don't need you anymore. Go ahead and you can leave now. So just be ready when you make those plan of actions that you have a backup plan set. All right. Thanks Dude, for watching. grooming Zoe today. I'm actually doing this video so I can kind of talk to you. I have some things I want to talk to you guys about. Um, Hi. Hi. They come. They have three. They had four schnauzers. They rescued them all. They have three now. And I'm grooming them for... I want to say five, at least five years, maybe five years, okay? They come on rotation. Um, mom and dad are probably in their 70s, 60s. There's a difference, just like David and I. There is an age difference. So dad is probably in his 70s. So they come one dog at a time, three days in a row. So that way they're not, their hands are not full and we're done in an hour. They're actually sitting outside in their car right now waiting. So that's the setup for her, okay? And she's the third one. We've done three schnauzers in a row. We used to do two at a time, but it's gotten too much. They're, they're too rambunctious for them to control at the same time. It makes it dangerous. So I'm going to chit-chat through this video, and uh, we're going to get to work. Okay. So really, this is not about the grooming on the schnauzer. I really have some things I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, but I, I'm putting it within the schnauzer groom. So on the schnauzer groom right now, we're going to do ten by a guard. I have to decide what I want to do. I think I'm going to do a four, 10 schnauzer pattern, four guard. We're going to fade, not draw a line, and then we're going to clean up the face, 10 on the head, 10 mostly everywhere except for the, the skirt we're going to do. And then under the guard, we're going to use a 10 because that's all I use is a 10. And then everything I use and have and the tools I have are going to be found on my website, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. So if you need something, please let me know. Go there and shop. So we've already started. Let me think how I want to start talking to you guys about what I want to talk to you about. I am sporting, I'm having a brain fart, uh, some jewelry here uh, from a YouTube, Diane, <laughs> can I think, can I think. So if you, if you love this, you can purchase it. Uh, it's not online yet. I ha I'm trying to get them all on, everything online from soap and from Suzy Creations to Diane's Copper Jewelry. But if you need or like something I have or I'm sporting, please, please uh, email me so I can get them some sales. I'm all about supporting other people and what they do, so especially if they're supporting me. Um, give, give back to the, the people that adore you and love you. Just give back to them if you can. Okay, it's actually storming pretty bad today, and uh, we have some mobile grooming after this, So, we're, and we've got a busy couple weeks coming up, so we've worked in a lot of of uh, appointments in different different days and times that we normally wouldn't do. Okay. Try to think here. So there's a few things I want to talk about, and one of them is I'm getting a lot of emails from groomers that are working in other places across the world. 
Uh, mostly the emails are coming from nationwide, so I know that there's an issue here in the United States, so let's say, okay? Um, it's really pouring now. Let me make sure you guys can see everything. Okay. Okay, in the United States, um, one, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. I have a college education. Two, I've had military experience. I spent my uh, over about seven years in the military, five active duty. Um, you just learn a lot of respect. You learn your place. You learn to shut up. You learn to don't talk shit, okay? And you, and you do learn to stick up for, well, I would say you learn to stick up for yourself, but I wouldn't say I learned all that in the military. Um, but you also learn to just respect other people and you just, you don't do things you're not supposed to. Like yesterday I went on base and you drive at a speed, you don't speed at all on base. And I'm like, I remember, you know, I went on base and I was like here at Carsville in uh, Fort Worth. And I was like, you know, too bad the whole nation couldn't be like this. Like you don't, you do not text and drive on base. You don't. You're gonna get in big trouble. You don't you don't um, speed on base. You're getting big trouble. You know, like you're you're gonna get in big trouble for doing the wrong things. Okay, and you you do learn that in the military. And some and I'm not saying everyone in the military knows their. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you you just. I'm telling you what what where my background's from. Okay. I've been loud my entire life. It's not gonna change. That's part of my mom's culture. We're pretty loud individuals in our culture we argue loud we talk loud and when we get mad we yell really loud okay that's me as a person now you put all that together then that's who i am i'm Dee croy okay that's me as a person but not everybody in this in the groom and not everyone that's a groomer is going to have the same characteristics as me okay for instance and i have to say some of the emails i'm getting about stories about what they're going through, where they're going through, really upset me. And I email, I'm emailing, uh, I think I already sent the email this morning, but I probably get an email once a week from another groomer, whether it's in a big box place, a corporate kind of building, uh, or not, or a personal, or, and I've get, gotten them from men and women groomers, not just women, okay? Um, Okay, so if you haven't noticed, we did the 10 all over. I've got my floor guard, which is the purple one, you guys. If you don't know about the guards, there's a video on it. It's called a, like guard, how to put your guard on, how to put your blade on. Go watch those, please. So my, I'm, what I'm getting to is here's some of the questions I'm getting. Didi, you know, uh, I'm working for such and such grooming salon and the groomers here are really mean to me. Uh, the groomers here talk a lot of crap about me. The groomers are always talking crap about other people. The groomers are always talking crap about me and other people. Um, Didi, I, what do you think about this? I'm getting slack from these people, these other groomers talking crap about me. And I asked this, finally pulled this one lady aside and said, please do not talk behind my back. And then she started getting mistreated then, you know, like being cold shouldered and being rudely treated and, um, maybe t even talked about more in the break room everyone's someone's whispering shit like that okay um someone that is uh, had gone to grooming school in the big box and now for some reason that manager is treating her like she doesn't so the groomer says oh everyone has an opinion everyone's not right or wrong everyone just has their own opinion and sometimes if you don't like it like if david tells me something i'll be like no babe i don't like that you know i don't want to do it that way that's it it isn't like I get mad or you can't get mad about him having his own opinion. And the same thing if you're going to run a salon or be the manager of a salon, you can't be like, no, you know, shut your mind, don't think. Okay, no, people have, we are human. That's what we do is think and analyze and want to be better, hopefully, and not be worse at something. So it really upsets me and it disappoints me. And I know it's out there. That's probably why I work alone. Um, I've worked with probably two really great groomers and many many non-great groomers as far as people people um how do i want to say it just respect towards other people just respect to humanity i've worked with a few good groomers and not a lot of great groomers okay um and i've been talked behind my back many many times even to this day someone has pulled up my video and talking shit behind my back with my video and they don't know me and they don't know what i'm doing 
and they're not here and they're still talking shit. And I'm gonna cuss because this is pissing me off. The, the people doing this is really pissing me off. Because they're not just doing it to me, they're doing it to people that don't deserve it. Um, someone who can't control their reaction. Like if you watch a video, for instance, and you get so pissed off about something, you've gotta call, call me and tell me and cuss me out. You got problems, man. So those kind of groomers are out there because they're working in salons that you work in. They're either talking shit about you, they're talking, they're in a Facebook group called uh, uh, Uncensored Facebook, okay? They're in there amongst themselves all bickering and slashing, lashing out at other groomers. For what reason? For, wh for what? At the end of the day, this is how I look at it. At the end of the day, when God takes you, okay, because you're not going to be here forever, but at the end of the day, when God takes you, what, what can you say about the life that you lived? Okay, did you do good? Were you a good person? Did you hurt people? Did you talk bad about people? Were you an adult bully? I have this phrase I call it all the time, adult bullies. Um, not kid bullies. We're so worried about our, our kids being bullied at school, which is true. I hate that. It pisses me off too. But that starts with an adult bully. That child must have learned it somehow maybe or underwent some trauma in his life, in his world. But there's a more adult bullies out there than there are children bullies, okay? And I can call out all these Facebook groups, for instance, that have these groups of just women and men, uh, just gossiping. Okay, get out of those groups. If you're not like that, why are you hanging out with people like that? So I, I just want to say, I'm really, really uh, disappointed in people, huma humanity, it, and I can't change it, but this video is going to be out there, and I hope some groomers watch it. And, got, and you know what, if it pisses you off, it must have hit a nerve. Because I can tell you what, I don't, I don't go around talking shit. I might tell some facts. I might tell you right now, the lady who just emailed me today, she's, she's not feeling real good about where she works and she went to grooming school and she's not in the grooming salon anymore because someone's getting favoritism in that grooming salon. That's my feelings, okay? And I think that if, you're, if you are supposed to lead by example, that's not the way you lead by example, talking behind people's back, making people feel like they shouldn't be coming to work. This is their livelihood. What if I made you feel like you shouldn't come to work? What if I told you you were ugly and you're a crappy person and, and talk crap behind you? And when you walked in a room, I was whispering behind your back. If you want to be an adult bully, man, you really disappoint me as a person. So I, I challenge you to think about what you say before you say it. And if you are in this environment, I challenge you to get out of it. If you, and so this is the thing. I remember that whole situation happening to me. And I honestly... I honestly, I went to my HR and they'll never look at you the same. So I told, I, told, I told many of you, pick and choose your battles. Is it worth it? Some of these big box places, I think that people have been there long, management to management to management. That's the stepping stone of management in the military. You go up that ladder before you go to the big guy, right? When you have a problem. But in the outside of the military, you do go through that ladder or they'll tell you to maybe go back down the ladder and just start over. But sometimes... The animosity and hate that's coming from your direct manager makes you feel so unsafe, unsecure, unhappy as a human being, all because of what? Jealousy, hate, um, they don't want you to learn all the grooming, they don't want to share the grooming role with you, they don't want to share clients with you, whatever the case may be. That person needs to back up and, and go through some training. That person needs to not run a, a salon. That person doesn't need to be running other groomers because that's not a good example of, how, of humanity uh, or management. You, if you're going to need help in a grooming salon, you have got to let your clients go. And maybe they don't want to be let, let go, and that's okay. But you have got to be willing to train the people that you want to, to have your back. And unfortunately, in the grooming industry, I have found groomers, get, get, groomers already hate me. And that's fine. I know they hate me. And what are they going to do? This is my world, and I help so many people. And you're going to help so many people that that one person, there's a lot more of those people around. Okay? Man, this is all mattered. I'm gonna come straight down with my 10 here and kind of cut this all up, but you can't fix the world, okay? You can leave a situation though. I can tell you that unless you are held against your will, if you are being mistreated, you can write a letter, you can give a two week notice and you can write a letter and you can get out of there. And in that letter, you be honest about what's going on and what happened and you put the names down of those people that have done certain things and you keep a diary of the, the treatment you're undergoing. 
and I would submit that to management and I'd give a two week notice. And that way, if anybody in employer didn't want to hire you because, you know, let's just say you're like, well, I didn't stay there very long. This is what this manager was doing to me. I didn't stay there very long because, you know, this is what happened there. You have a diary of what, your next employer if you're going to stay in the industry because we all, I, I get it. I have um, worked with people that have told me their stories and I'm like, you know, I get it. I, I worked there and I went through that. But now it's gonna, what it's going to come down to is your work ethic, your work quality. And if I need to work with you on a, a bath or a groom or you can do it by yourself or how many dogs you nick. Okay, I am, this, this conversation goes for every group of, any, for anybody, not just groomers. But. I am talking to you other groomers. Stop talking behind people's back. Stop talking about people you don't know. Stop being a jerk to people you work with. Be a good person because at the end of the day, when God looks at you in the face, you better be able to say, I did good. I did really good, God. I did the best I could. I did even further above and beyond what I could have done because at the end of the day, that's who you're going to have to look at. Um, and if you are proud of who you are today, then by all means, great. But if you're not, you can change. And you, have a, you are a human and you have the ability to change and you can put that in your mind to change. And if you don't know how to change because of peer pressure and people you're hanging out with, you get out of that group. Get out of that peer pressure group. Get out of being surrounded by people that talk crap. There's no need for it. Um, I can go to any other industry, my real estate, I can go anywhere and we don't sit there. I'm not saying there aren't people that do that. Whoo, David had to come get the dog. He was like, Dee Dee. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. David's like, Didi, you're being a bulldog. And I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bulldog this little situation right now. So let's just go back. I'm going to repeat myself one time. If you're watching this and you're a groomer and you hate my work, I know you're out there. And I know you're watching because I've seen it. I've, wa I've read your comments. How do you hate something that you watch repetitively? I don't think you hate it. I think you have uh, issues that you, ha you don't want other people to think you actually enjoy watching certain things. But... If you hate something, you would not go back and do it again and again and again and again. And you sure as heck wouldn't subscribe to my channel. There's an exact example of just straight up bullying, straight up adult bullying. Nothing nice to say, always negative, always down talking somebody, always trying to kick him in the butt. What if I, you know, no offense, but what if I commit suicide? Would you be happy then? Well, does it make you feel better to make someone feel unsafe, unhappy? <sighs> If you're watching this and it, this is exactly what's happening in your workplace, I challenge you. You take that, you get their email and you send them the video. And you let them know, Dee Dee said, stop bullying me. Stop talking crap behind my back. Stop being a, a not a nice person. And at the end of the day, you really need to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and go, you know what, I'm a, I'm a really shitty person and I should change. Or I'm a really great person and I don't know what that person's talking about. So if, they're, if you're really a great person, then somebody in your presence would never feel unsafe, hurt, uh, like they are not worthy or they don't belong somewhere. And you're in the same workplace. The way I see it, there was a, a Navy lady who wrote me. Uh, she's not in the Navy anymore. She's out. But she's working as a groomer somewhere. And let me tell you, I told her, how dare you let yourself be subdued to so much disrespect when you've served our country and serving your country this is what that means for you that you those of you who haven't served your served our country serving your country especially since my dad served my sister's serving I've served I know firsthand in a military family the loss that can be gained from not having your dad around when you're growing up because he deployed all the time not having your sister around because she might be she might be in Iraq flying a flying over some situations okay you might lose somebody at any moment and you have to be willing to and understanding that this is our job first and our nation comes first and the protection of the nation comes first and i know all your army i know marines and navy all you guys out there i know you know what i mean but it's a it's the people ha who haven't served that don't get it so you don't get separated from your family you don't have to undergo being away for months and months and months you don't get to see who you love just it's very tolling and so this Navy personnel, including men, and men, I'm just talking about this one specific person right now. She has to come back and get out of the military, find jo a job, find work after protecting the nation in any way that she did, whether it was like me, administrative work on the front line, in, an, in the boat, doing radar, whatever the case is, it's all a plan to protect the nation. Okay, it all comes together and that's what the main focus is, protecting this place that we call the United States of America and where we have freedom. Freedom to hurt other people, right? Freedom to be an adult bully. Freedom to be an asshole. 
and freedom to be nice and freedom to be kind and freedom to give. Now, I, ch I challenge you, if you're in the grooming industry and you are being treated this way, you share this video. I don't really care if it pisses people off. If someone is talking crap, they should just stop, okay? And just mind their own business. If they don't have, if you don't have, why can't we just go back to the core of what we grew up through learning? I know I grew up learning it. I don't know about y'all, but you, you say and treat people as you want to be treated. I tell you what, if I see someone not being treated right, I'm going to say something. And I, I might not like that if someone did that to me, but don't treat other people like crap then, you know? Someone's working and you're on, the, and you're on the same side. You're on the same team. You work at the same business, accomplishing the same thing. You need, at, at a big, big, big box business, I know what you're, you're trying to get sales. You're trying to get your numbers up. You're trying to make sure no one gets hurt, hopefully. No dogs get hurt. You're trying all these things and you're on the same team, but you want to boot someone out of your team for what? And then you want to make them feel like a crappy person doing it. Yeah, I told that Navy personnel, uh, ex-Navy, she's out already. I was so hurt that uh, she served our country like many others and they go work in an industry that just steps on her and makes her feel like why why did they serve our country and they know what it feels like not to even be in the united states for four years not to have the same rights not even to have their family around i i can't even uh, i'm just so disheartened right now so if you're out there and you are working in these get out go work somewhere else and if you can't find somewhere that's willing to be kind to you in the grooming industry Call me up. I will connect you. Some people did, were like, Didi, I just want to. I just want to work with you. Okay, so I do a lot of uh, business coaching. I do some business coaching, and you know exactly who I'm talking about because it's if it's confidential. If you've asked me to keep it confidential, I have. But if you feel like you don't have anybody else in the grooming world that's kind, loving, understanding, wants to teach you what what I know, wants to educate you, I will. Okay. This this comment is about the grooming industry because I I can't imagine going into my real estate office and, and asking for help and someone trying to talk behind we don't do that you might have your opinion about somebody you know not everyone's gonna like you not everyone's gonna like everything you do not everyone's gonna like the way you look or how you sound how loud you are how quiet you are not everyone's gonna like that and that's okay you don't have to hang out with them you don't have to love them but if you're in the same work environment you're in the same team you should support your team members you should support those people that are with you doing the same thing you're doing or that you know that's not really a team and I think you need some training. I think you need some team training. Matter of fact, I think you need to go in the military. <laughs> so this is, I had, to, I had to put Zoe in the bathtub. I was like, let me talk to you alone. Okay. I know this hits a lot of you at home. And I love you. I care about you. I may not know you, but I know your situation and I know what you're going through. And I want you to be strong. And I want you, if you want to go talk to HR, go talk to HR. But put your two-week notice in when you do. I don't think you'll be treated the same um, after that. If you want to, this is, this is something else you can do. If you're not being treated well, you do your letter. And, and proof is in the pudding. Okay, the pudding is in the proof. Okay, the proof is in the pudding. You put everything down that, that Monica told me to fuck off. Jessica ignored me all day. Veronica, she went out back, smoked her cigarette, and let me do 15 dogs by myself. Um, you know what I'm saying? I had my list, you have your list. You write down everything that people are doing to you and at the end of the day, you're gonna do your two week notice with that whole list of your diary. This is a treatment I got. Y'all need some training on how to run your business, how to run training, how to work with other people. There is training for that. And you guys need that because right now this is how you make people feel. And I could go get a lawyer, okay? I Call a lawyer, shit, call a lawyer, it's free. Free counseling for the first hours in most cases. They'll look at your case and see if there's a case to be had. If you're not being treated right, I want you to do something. And maybe that one thing is to just get out of there, okay? You don't have to, to, to suffer through it. And you don't have to put up with it. If they're bullies, get out of there, okay? You have a choice. You're an adult now. You have a choice to get out of there. If you're not an adult and you need help, please reach out. I will help you get some help. But this is, I'm focusing on the groomers, okay? Groomers, adult groomers that are starting their career or in their career or have been in their career a minute or have been promised by uh, somebody that was going to help them or teach them or coach them or, or that they, you know, all, I know you guys know exactly this is hitting home. I know it because I've talked to many of you and my heart really hurts. And that's why I'm like very <sighs> determined to get through. And I want other people to know, stop being a bully. Don't be a bully, man. Look at yourself in the mirror. And if you talk crap about people and you're a bully, honestly, you're not a good person. 
it's not a good example to teach other people and other children. All right, I'm done. I care about you guys out there watching me and supporting me, and I don't want you to go through anything like that with anybody. So get out of the situation. Two-week notice, call it a good. Don't ruffle any feathers. Two-week notice on the letter, and you're out of there. Thanks for watching Dee Croy, my favorite groomer on YouTube. For those of you who love me and support me and are not bullies, man, I just, I, and you know who you are, I spread it around the world. Be kind and be loving to your neighbor, to your other groomers, and if they don't want to be, remove yourself. You do not hang, have to hang out with those kinds of people because there's enough good, us good people hanging out together that we don't need to do that to other people, okay? We can just be good within our own situation, in our own business, and share good love and kindness, okay? That's all this world really needs. Thanks for watching, Diddy Cry, with my favorite one. We're gonna press on. So, I'm glad I got to tell you all that. It really bothered me that email she sent me and what she's going through, man. And uh, the other day I talked to someone else, too, uh, out in uh, Oregon. And same thing, man. Um, I'm in Texas, and if, if I'm the closest brewer that's gonna give you love and education and kindness over the phone, that's sad. That is just sad to me. Right, Zoe? So I'm just tidying up all these, uh, the 10. And man, we had some, David was like, it looks like it's gonna tornado out there. It did, man, the wind was blowing sideways. really bother me you guys I don't like bullies bullying me and I don't like especially don't like bullies bullying someone else what does it take a bully bully someone until they commit suicide I mean what does it take when we're grown adults you're gonna be happy if someone just ends their life so they can get off this world because you bully them it's not cool man watch what you say it might hurt be hurtful to people But at the same time, if I'm talking about mean talk, I'm not talking about your dog's mad. If, if that's mean to you, we got problems because that, that might be a fact. I'm going to tell people, you know, you, you're going to be honest with people, okay? You're just not going to be mean, outright mean and bullying. And, and just, I hope you, man, I'm talking to adults here. I hope you guys get it. Thunder? Don't worry, we're almost done. 
Today is May 3rd. So, here in Texas, man, we got a big storm that came through this morning. It was supposed to cut our weather people, man. We need, they need some help. Man, they're always late. Oh, you go to Oklahoma, those weather folks know what they're talking about. You come here to Texas, our weather people are about a day off. We were supposed to have it last night and it, nothing showed up. It didn't even sprinkle in my area. So, man, this bracelet, Diane, I just love it. I love your work. And I have been craving her bracelet. Like, I put it on and I can feel the energy in it. It is amazing. And I've actually been forgetting to put it back on because I'm like, where is that bracelet? It feels so good. So I got it on today and I don't think I'm going to take it off. Hey, <laughs> David. Oh, cool. Yeah, I got my dog up stand. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, woo, woo. Woo, woo, woo. I'm so sorry. I'm so happy about the dog up stand, man. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, I got to make those. That's why he sent it to me. It's because I'm going to mimic it. I've been dreaming about it, too. My dog up stand. I... I groomed all day without my dog upstand, man. Yeah, my dog upstand. Here's my dog upstand, Zoe. Yeah, I'm so excited. I do not use these straps, man. I know I told him to send me the straps so I can have them on here, but I I don't like the straps at all. And the strap thing just came right off the thing. I think I'm gonna see if that. Let me see here. I gotta mess with that later. You know how some folks are like, the energy, you're too loud. As loud as I was talking, this dog, right? Sometimes it's not that. Sometimes the animal comes in with its own pent-up energy. And this is, these schnauzers are pretty rambunctious animals. They're the, the ram, most rambunctious of them all, I think. And most curious. You don't want to stand on the dog up stand? Mm -hmm. No? You don't really need it, do you? Let me just put that there. Yeah, Deborah, uh, last night she, we're about to sell out of our dog up stands. And I said, Deborah, she called me. She's like, oh my gosh, I got you on the phone. I was like, yeah, uh, I don't always pick, I don't always am able to pick up the phone, but if I can, I will. Um, she's like, I'm in Houston and I was gonna order some stuff. And I said, and she said, I'm gonna order that dog. I said, if I, you're gonna, let me stop you right there. If you're going to order the dog up stand, you need to go order it now, get off the phone. There's only like four left. Uh, and then we do a reprint and then reprinting in the United States is not like reprinting in China or something we don't we don't get that luxury of printing millions and we're not printing like that many and plus we're a small business too so we're gonna print it right here in the United States and put together right here in the United States so it takes about 40 days for from everything to go start to finish and it's a pretty cool process if you haven't seen us putting them together go check out that video um, putting up the dog putting the dog up stands together if you haven't binged, man, you're missing out. There's a bunch to see. Go binge for a while. Like, take this weekend and binge for a while. That's if you like the show, anyway. It's if you like watching us. 
If you don't like watching us, don't. you don't have to watch us, man. Click to a different channel. If you don't like something I'm doing, just click to a different channel. We don't need your negativity. So many knots in there. I gotta cut that one out. Okay. Let's do, focus on your eyeballs here. Look over this way. Sometimes you just have to wait for everyone to walk by and just focus on what you're trying to do. Walking back and forth. If you're walking back and forth, you're bothering the groomer. Don't walk back and forth. Don't touch the dog on the table. Sometimes I'd hire a bather, uh, maybe even a day helper. And I'm like, don't touch the dog, don't talk to the dog on the table, please. I don't think I've ever said that out loud on my YouTube channel. So yeah, that's part of training. The first day I say, these are the things you do not do. You do not keep walking by the dog. You don't come sweep while I'm grooming the dog. You don't talk to the dog. You don't touch the dog. Don't touch the dog on the table. Crazy, right? But it's true. Uh, you can put, you can, that's, that's my, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. Thanks for bringing my jacket. You're welcome. <laughs> you sweetie pie, huh? You sweetie pie. You can turn your scissors around this way. You just have to learn how to work with them, right? It might take a six months or so, but you'll get it. I used to spend like 20 minutes on eyebrows. It would probably be the one thing that slowed me down. And every video I watched took, they would be just blending it for an hour. And I'm like, I don't have time to blend eyebrow, eye, eyebrows for an hour. There's one lady that did work for me. Um, they had the best eyebrows. I'll never forget it. I could never get them just like her, but at the same time, there's other reasons why she doesn't work for me, and there's other reasons why we're just different kind of groomers. So, but the one thing she had good was good eyebrows. Man, they 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 were like perfect. She had, she knew the technique to do them really good. So I'm not a perfect eyebrow person. If you guys want to share how perfect your eyebrows are, please do down below so other people can learn. I prefer to have it like a very quick, brief, short, easy way to get the eyebrow, eyebrows. Not something that takes a very long time. So if you have techniques that help you, just by all means comment below. You can hear the knot, just well, now we're going to go through and make sure we get it out of there. It'll do click, 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 click. Hope nobody's hurt. Gotta keep over them, keep safe over them. Mm -hmm. Tiny little mats here. Just going to scoop this down. Kind of clean up these, this muggle hair. Some of this. You can't tell I'm doing this, but it'll be it will be done, you know what I mean? Right in that lip area. Can't even tell. It's nice and clean now.
Now this dust is going somewhere. If you don't have a mask on, you're breathing it in. And even through my mask, I can kind of still pick it up a little bit. Just imagine if I didn't have a mask on, I would be safe breathing this in. You know how dirty that probably is? The toenail. Make sure you get a mask. You can find them online on our website, myfavoritegroomer.com slash shop. Dremel, you don't want to hold it down for too long. It's just like getting your teeth done. It'll get really hot, I would imagine, just on the actual nail. So don't hold it down at one place too long. Keep moving it around. With these folks, I really concentrate. I get the nail, nail I don't want to touch your face. I get the nail trim done first, get it right to the vein, and then I actually come back and um, grind down the tip of the nails so that it doesn't scratch mom and dad up and tear their skin. Okay, if you have clients that ha might have that issue you can see on their forearms that they're being really cut up you can say either offer it at a more at a, a upcharge but definitely offer the um, nail dremeling for those clients that have those issues I do want to touch up everywhere here and then we will be done. Kind of see her eyes moving around. She's got kind of her eyes are. I know, baby. Let me see. Eyes are weeping a little bit here. I'm going to take that up just a tad bit inside there. All right, thanks for watching DD Curry with my favorite groomer on YouTube. Please support us, watch us, and share. And don't don't take anything from anybody that's not worth taking. Okay, move on, get out of the situation. Don't bully my friends. Don't bully my fellow groomers. Be a good person and do the best you can while you're here on this earth, because your your life is not guaranteed after this minute. So enjoy your life, have fun with it, and be happy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I forgot to say. Run your life like this. Try not to take things personal. Um, there's going to be negativity, just like you guys tell me. Try to push past through it. Just don't take things personal, and you'll probably be able to work through a lot of things better. But get out of there. So it really just comes down to just talking to people the way you expect to be spoken to. Treat others the way you want to be treated, just the old school way. And do, just do the best you can. All right, I just want to make sure I got that in there.